been playing, both for us against Italy and playing for his, his club. Um, and the follow week, uh, two or three weeks ago, and he's came off the bench and played well in the last two games. Uh, also, we, we understand it's a week-to-week -week game, so players like Johnny and Josh, who've been playing well, who've put a lot of effort into this championship, we feel it's, it's better than coming off the bench this week. I'd imagine Hamish Watson's selection was... Uh was in the category of no-brainer, was it considering what he did on the off-the-bench last Saturday? Yeah, and especially after um, Jamie being injured. I think it might have been a selection we'd have looked at anyway because Jamie's played a lot of rugby and taken a lot of hits. Um, unfortunately, he's not, not available, but Hamish is, is a great man to, to replace him. I thought his impact was outstanding. Like the pace and power he brought in the last 20 minutes was great. Is there any sense of... Sort of, in terms of Absolutely, and we we have players that have came back for us during the championship that are getting closer to full match fitness. Players, players like VP Nell, who um, played last week, uh, Mags Bradbury, Sam Skinner, who played for his club last week, uh, Hamish, uh, as we mentioned. And we have players coming back into, into the back three like Sean Maitland. But on the other side, the players that have came into the team because of injury, they've grabbed their opportunities. And we see that happening again this week. People like Darcy Graham, who's, who's been outstanding, off the bench and then starting against Wales. And Byron McGuigan, who, uh, who played well at the weekend. How much of a difference do you think last week's experience will, will make to Darcy? It's, it's, it's both one time playing against Wales at home, but going to England and, and facing them in their own home centre. What do you think of the experience last week and how he, how he coped over that? Over that well, he, he should take confidence in how he played. He was up against one of the best wingers that has played the game in the Northern Hemisphere, um, someone who was a little bit taller than him, and he, he played very well. Playing away from home in a different environment is a test to, to any player, any young player, but Darcy's came off the bench um, in Cardiff in November and also at Stade de France a couple of weeks ago and really took the game to the opposition, and that's what we expect and what we look for him this weekend. It's been a difficult campaign, but do you get a sense from the guys that yeah, they're, they're very motivated. Um, they're full of energy as well. We've, we've trained twice now, uh, and the sessions have been a real high quality, a real high energy, as I said. We, we, we improved between France and, uh, and Wales. There was a lot of positive aspects of the, the play in Wales against a quality team. So we, we, we know we have to improve again. To, to win down at Twickenham, but that's that's always the focus, how, how we get better to the next game. Gregory, you've been, you've been having a lot of attacking minutes, all the stats, a lot of stats are in Scotland's favour, but you seem to have lost the ability to, to penetrate. What's what's going on with Scotland's attack now in the opposition 22? <coughs> Yeah, I would, I would say finish rather than penetrate, because to get into those areas, you have, you have to penetrate. Um, and we, we did that, I think we had... 63 line breaks at the weekend. It has been an area, though, in the opposition 22 that we we haven't delivered. We didn't deliver against Ireland when we had a couple of opportunities in the first half. Um, we didn't deliver at times against Wales in that area. And partly that's due to how good the defences you're up against and how you have to work them more than 20 phases to, to get the breakthrough. Partly a little bit... Um, of, of maybe referee decisions in that area, but what we're focusing on is how we can do things better, and it hasn't been good enough. And ultimately, that's that's on me. That's on us as coaches to make sure that all the good work that goes in leading up to five, ten metres for the try line ends up with with points on the board. Ben, how do you see England feeling up this time? Do you expect it to be a different clash from, from last year? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, they, they, they're playing better rugby than, than they were um, in our game last year and then subsequently their, their two or three games after they played us. They've, they've got a lot of the players available. They're, they're big players who, um, who fit their game plan, which is a lot based around power. Uh, they have an excellent uh, kicking game through their half-backs especially. And they seem to be able to get their, their runners involved um, pretty direct, but really to 
to make sure you're not up in defense. And do you guys ever need any motivation? You're defending a club that's a cup. Yes, we are. And we took a lot of work to win that back. It took 10 years. So uh, we, we want to make sure we hold on to it for a bit longer. The players that played in the A2 years ago were the ones who had that experience, which was really hard for them. What can they say to those who are maybe going to Britain for the first time? Well, that's that's something I know they've they've discussed uh, as a playing group. Um, that th those that were there two years ago, um, they certainly don't want that to happen again. And that's that was a a tough day for for everyone who was a Scotland rugby supporter and for the players that had to go through that. And we, first of all, we're going to be much tougher to to beat, um, but we've got to take our game to the to the opposition as well. You think the mentality of those players who played that day? Yeah, I think any of the experiences you have, whether they're positive or negative, you've got to turn them into a way of of being better, of being stronger, of using that experience um, to, to improve. Uh, and obviously since that day, the, the team um, followed up with a win the following week against Italy. They went on the summer to beat Australia and Sydney for the first time. So it had a, an immediate effect of, of producing wins after it. Yeah, Well, I was asked two or three weeks ago about this when it was speculated what might happen. So my answer is, is going to be the same. I know there's there's discussion going on today, and we we don't know what what will happen Did until. Did actually in the last half an hour and confirm that there will be a promotion relegation system and that they're scrapping this semi finals team as well? Which I guess. Uh, sorry, that's a proposal, though. That's yeah. not what's yeah. happening. Ah, yeah. Sure. So yeah. things still have to be decided, and they'll be decided by people that are not coaches and um, people like me. So they, they, the, the one positive is it sounds like there's a lot of excitement about the future of our game, um, competing uh, organisations and businesses that are looking to invest in the, in the international game, which should have a knock-on effect of of keeping our game healthy and, and moving forward. Gregor, just, just one more for me. Outside of your own bubble, nobody's expecting Scotland to win. <coughs> no one in here? I come close. Well, we take, oh, we'll take, no, a, we'll take a strong, <laughs> take a strong okay. poll. Um, everyone is predicting bookmakers and everyone are predicting a, a, a heavy defeat for Scotland. What is that? Something you have to pay attention to? Is it something you draw strength from? What do you do with that? The fact that no one thinks you're going to win it. Well, you, uh, we we can't really. <laughs> worry about that if no one does think we're not going to win um, then that's that's fine uh, we we believe we can win and that's what we're working to do this week uh, Scotland teams tend to be underdogs on a number of occasions and it usually brings the best out in them okay, we'll just move on to the 10 